Last time I we hung out, you were doing pure carnivore. Yeah, I'm how doing is that, that now? You're doing it now? Yeah, because it's January. Oh. January's World Carnivore Month. I don't know who fucking made that up, but yeah. Why not? I, I mixed in a little fruit. I eat fruit because I find when I don't do that, and I, I did straight carnivore for the first few days, like yeah. I think like the first eight or nine days, but it was, uh, it's hard. To, I was slogging through workouts. Just no energy? Yeah, yeah. like like just a, a, and they say there's an adjustment period, just like keto. You know, they call it like the, if you've ever done, have you ever done a keto diet? Uh, not for more than like a week at a time. It takes a while to yeah. really get your body to turn ketogenic and yeah. uh, to start burning fat instead of carbohydrates. And it's, um, there's a thing they call the keto flu, where it feels like <laughs> almost like you got the flu. Where that you're like, sounds uh, awful. Feel, not really like the flu. It's a bad way of describing it. It's more like you're not well rested. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, like, when I would work out, I would, like, have to really push through these workouts. Mm -hmm. Like, you feel like you're missing a gear. Sure. That's what it feels Just like. Just none of that extra yeah. ATP to, like, burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can't get into fourth gear. It's it's weird. It's like, it doesn't feel good. After, but, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, just saying, but when I added fruit, that goes away. That's what I was going to ask, yeah. yeah. After we hung out and you were doing that, I read Paul Saladino's book, The Carnivore code i think it's called mm -hmm. a carnivore diet the one where he eats meat fruit and honey yeah. and bases it because like, he's been on your show before mm -hmm. right yeah so i yeah. read his book and uh i thought it was really interesting you know the whole idea of like those are the most sought after foods in the world mm -hmm. um and they are for most cultures but definitely not all cultures right which i think is maybe it all depends abandoned. on what the resources are right of course yeah of i mean course. if you're dealing with a culture that has access to an enormous amount of rice an enormous amount of or cassava or whatever right. those things are you know, there's there's different things that people eat where they, you know, they just eat it because of convenience. That's yeah, availability yeah. and cost is, and effort, right? But if you have access to all the food and you really wanted to live an optimal lifestyle, I do think that organs are, are primary. It's yep. like eating liver and eating heart yep. is very, very good for you. And then eating red meat, yep. especially like lean red meat, is nah, very dude. good for you. Mm -mm. It's, all about, uh, <laughs> it's all about Lucky Charms. I saw, I saw your terms. post. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? <laughs> that was wild. Isn't that nuts that that's a real, like, NIH-funded food chart that places Lucky Charms above eggs? There were so many things, too, not yeah. just the Lucky... I mean, that was yeah. preposterous, but there were so many things that Chocolate I'm like... Chocolate-covered almonds. Right. That's like, healthier than a steak. Off. That's candy. Exactly. That's <laughs> literally chocolate. Yeah, there's almonds, but it's fucking chocolate, which is sugar and some cacao. Yeah. Uh, that was wild. Straight horseshit. Like, yeah. these people are criminals. Yeah. They're all being paid off. They've all been paid off by these big food corp corporations. By the big the yeah. big food, yeah, industries. Oh, yeah. For sure. Well, it's been proven that, like, there's been a bunch of these people that are, like, fat doctors that are trying to tell you that there are no junk foods, and it's really oh, this I haven't shaming heard that. people. Yeah, big fat ladies that are saying this. You know, the same kind of ones that don't want you using the term fat. Sure. But sure. they're... They're being paid off by, like, these companies that make, like, fucking ho-hos and Oreos and, and, and blah, blah, cookies blah. and shit. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that kind of food, not maybe maybe not those in specific, but right. th those kinds of foods yeah. where they're readily available at supermarkets. Gen in general, other than rice and some beans and some other stuff that you get in the center of the grocery store, all the shit around the edges is what you want. You want the stuff that's Interesting. fresh. You want the stuff like the vegetables, like they have to like they replace them all the time. Yeah. That shit in the boxes in the middle, most of that stuff's not good for you. Of course. Unless it's canned or bottled. Yeah. You know, I mean there's tomato sauces and stuff that's sure. in the center that's that's fine for you. Still packed with sugar though, right? Some of them. Yeah. I mean there's organic ones that yeah. aren't. But the outside, that's what you want. Yep. You want where the milk is, where's the cheese, where's sure. the eggs. Sure. So on the outside. It's refrigerated. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason you have to eat it fresh. Yeah, you gotta yeah. eat it quick. Right. <laughs> and we're it's it's really like a lot of the stuff, like especially like pasteurized and homogenized milk. There's a real good argument that that's not even good because your body's like, what is this weird liquid protein stuff? Mm -hmm. This is not like, where's the enzymes that are supposed to be available in raw milk? So like, what what's your feeling on like a protein shake? Like you're doing this carnivore thing, mm -hmm. you're obviously getting tons of protein. You're yeah. not doing a protein shake as well, are you? No, it's not necessary. Yeah, I mean, if you're eating meat. Most of, most of what I'm eating is meat and eggs. Sure. That's what, mostly what I'm that's, eating. That's a yeah. dream diet, really. <laughs> but the thing is, I feel great. Yeah. My mind, I'm very clear-headed, and I have a lot of energy. It's, every time I do it, every January, I'm like, God, why don't I eat this way all the time? 
The problem is I'm a glutton. Yeah. And I really love pasta and I really <laughs> love cheeseburgers and I really love pizza. I fucking love pizza, man. Yeah. Woo! I love bread. Yeah. It tastes great, but I love it's bread. It's definitely not my thing in terms of like what my body responds to the best. My body responds the best to fruit and meat and eggs and 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 you know organ meats and that's really and fish. Yeah. My body responds the best when I eat that stuff. And when yeah. I eat that stuff, it, my body's like, "Yeah, great. This is awesome." Like I can eat a steak and then go right on stage. And yeah, not have a problem and you feel at all. fine. You but feel if, good. But if I eat a bowl of spaghetti oh. and go on stage, I'm fucking. You're duh. a drip. Yeah, for sure. I eat a whole pizza and go on stage. <laughs> uh, I'm so dumb. It's like it takes away like 30 percent of my um, mind capacity. Clarity. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this, and if you've covered this kind of stuff before, by by all means, we can skip over it. Do you get more aggressive when you're on the carnivore diet? I I think you do. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Well, you think Why about you carnivores that? worldwide, right? Yeah. Taking humans out of the equation, just pure carnivores, lions, mm-hmm. wolves, so on and so forth. There's definitely a correlation between the need to eat meat and the drive for eating meat, right? Mm-hmm. And that drive comes from aggression, right? Yeah. That's why they're fighting. That's why they're in competition. That's why they're at the top of the food chain, right? So this is a personal theory that's grounded in nothing, but I would think when you're eating nothing but meat, which is going to spike your testosterone, it's going to make you feel and act more like a carnivore and less like a, an omnivore, right? And be more aggressive and yeah. be more dominant. I don't know. I mean, again, you've had people on the show far more qualified, but it's just thinking as a biologist who know, who's studied carnivores, you see that aggression comes from a place of, it's, it's cyclical. Yeah. The food makes them aggressive. The the aggression makes them require acquire food. Yeah, I I I, th- I noticed that the first time I did it. Yeah. The first time I did it, the very first carnivore m- month, I noticed I was like, God, I feel a little aggro. <laughs> you know. But I also wonder um, because that was when I went very strict carnivore, and I was having a really hard time working out. Yeah. Like my workouts were pretty diminished mm-hmm. and i think maybe i wasn't exerting enough energy Interesting. because my body's very accustomed to working out really hard almost every day sure so it's like i've i feel like if you just maintain like if you get your body to a point where it's accustomed to like exertion especially explosive exertion jiu-jitsu yeah. kickboxing kettlebells like that kind of thing. my body's very accustomed to that sure and so when i backed off of it i wonder if that is what was re- responsible because you had this pent up yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense Interesting. And then I think on top of that, there's the only eating meat thing. And then I also think maybe it's not that that gets you aggressive, but that the bread and the pasta sedates you. That's probably more accurate. Probably more accurate. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think that's probably 